This old columnist has been covering motorsports for more seasons than I care to count. <laughs> well, I guess I stayed at it for so long because I admire so much those guys and gals in the fire suits and space helmets who push themselves and their machines to the limit on Sunday afternoons, chasing a checkered flag and trying to pick up a few driver championship points. <laughs> those magnificent Sunday drivers. Hey. Sunday drivers. Sunday drivers. <laughs> yes, that's my title. Sunday drivers. I jumped at the chance when a filmmaker friend of mine, on assignment at the Detroit Grand Prix, asked me to tag along. He was profiling several drivers competing on different levels of pro racing at the Grand Prix. Two of the most intriguing were American Eddie Cheever and Frenchman Elaine Prost. They drive turbocharged Formula One machines on the Grand Prix circuits of the world. I first met Cheever and Prost at a press conference introducing Team Renault to the national media. Of nearly all the people in the room that day, they seemed the least likely to be internationally famous race drivers. <laughs> they, they stood in the back by the coffee and rolls, smiling, nodding. Cheever, in his preppy red sweater, looked like he worked for the convention center, for Christ's sake. The press conference was, for me, most enlightening. Normally, I would be in the audience asking questions. As an observer, I had a different outlook. I was acutely aware of the microscopic inspection motorsport celebrities are subjected to, and I felt genuine empathy for Cheever and Prost for the privacy they must sacrifice. While it was the talented Elaine Prost who was leading in driver points for the coveted Grand Prix World Championship, my brother journalists couldn't get enough of the friendly, articulate young American. That's probably the best aspect of being somebody who's involved in sports, is that every country is so patriotic. When you go to France, Alain Prost is, is uh, very busy, and when I come here, I'm very busy. Saying that Eddie Cheever was busy during Grand Prix week is <laughs> like saying Rip Van Winkle was taking a nap. With most of the press attention being lavished on Cheever during this American Grand Prix stop, it seemed to me that Elaine Prost might have an advantage in preparing himself mentally to race. From the moment Cheever arrived at a huge Team Renault reception following the press conference, he was the center of everyone's attention. Talking with the popular young driver was next to impossible. It was clear that most inside dope on Cheever would have to come from my old pal Jacques Poussin. Tell you when he came in Detroit for the Grand Prix, we, uh, you know what it is. It's a very, it's a very stressing week, and you have to know that these, these drivers, like Eddie Cheever or Alain Prost, every two weeks, the same story starts again. You know they are on the, under the media of Detroit. Next week they will be under the media of Montreal. In uh, two weeks they will be under the media of Great Britain. So. You are always a bit careful with these guys because you never know what are their reactions. I like meeting people. I like, I've never once been uh, uncomfortable meeting a lot of new people. I've never grumped when I have to sign an autograph. For me, that's, that shows that I've reached a pinnacle in my career that's very important. The most important thing, of course, though, is uh, driving the racing car. And I can't wait till we get started with that so all this PR work is finished. Since my filmmaker friend couldn't get close to Cheever, and Elaine Prost had slipped anonymously into the crowd, the camera crew scouted the party for other drivers. Boy, did they find one. Cat Kaiser was a pert and spunky 105 pounds of nervous energy and boundless enthusiasm. Come Sunday, she'd be rubbing fenders with a bunch of good old boys in the Champion Spark Plug Challenge, a Grand Prix support race sponsored by the International Motorsports Association. Uh, that's IMSA if you want to take a load off your tongue. Her uh, entry was in marked contrast to the royal welcome Elaine Prost and particularly Eddie Cheever had received moments earlier. For Cat, there is no publicity entourage, no uniform crew members. There is just Cat Kaiser, her car, 
and a few curious passers-by. Anyone that does talk with her learns quickly this is one poised, confident, determined young woman. As spirited and competitive in her own arena as Eddie Cheever and Elaine Prostar in the lofty world of Grand Prix. Twelve. While my cinematography cohorts worked with Cat throughout the week, I was never far away. The more I saw and heard, the more impressed I was. She'd be an inspiration to any young driver thinking about moving up to professional motorsport competition. Well, about 10 years ago, uh, my husband was racing, and uh, he decided that uh, it was about time that I became involved in the program. I was more concerned about buying furniture for the house, et cetera, et cetera. So he, um, he thought it would be best if I got into the wheel of the car. And I did. Poor thing has not been able to get in back to the car since, since I took over. Well, David is, he is, doesn't have an ego problem. Uh, he, he enjoys, he's my chief mechanic, and I really believe that he's probably 80% of the program. Without him and, and his effort and the other crew members, uh, the team just doesn't go on. Unfortunately, the driver gets most of the glory, and, and I think if you talk to most drivers, they would agree that uh, it really is your crew that puts on the whole program. We moved to Akron, Ohio in 1974, and I went through um, SCCA regional uh, driver schools and regional schools and then uh, national level. I enjoy the competition. Um, the co competition is very, very important to me. I'll find, I'll make a game out of anything. That's basically why I hate housework, because there's nobody there for me to compete against. It's just me against the vacuum cleaner, and I, and I hate it. racing. I won the championship in this little club that we belonged to. Then when I raced SCCA, I won the division championship. I was the um, central division champion in H production. And I also won the President's Cup, which is a very prestigious cup. It's a big, huge cup. It's about humongous. It's got all these names on it. Penske and, and um, uh, Paul Newman's on it. A lot of heavyweights are on that cup, and somewhere on it is Catherine Kaiser. It's really neat. While Kat and her crew could always seem to make time for my friends with the cameras, coverage of Prost and Cheever continued to uh, <laughs> elude them. The morning after the reception, we couldn't believe our good fortune. Cheever alone in the lobby of his hotel. But alas, before we could even come up with a good opening line, the network crew moved in, and the palace guard moved Cheever out. My film friends and I packed up our gear and tagged along. It was obvious to me that the PR obligations were taking their toll on Cheever. And he seemed to be moving into a different mindset. Maybe he was thinking about the time not too far off now, when he would be shoehorned into his car with 600 horses of turbocharged fury strapped on his back. As the Formula One cars roared out of the pits on their first practice tour of the Detroit Riverfront Circuit, I was caught in the excitement that is Grand Prix. Little tingles danced on my arms as I realized that this was motorsport at the zenith. with Cheever or Prost <sighs> would be even more difficult to come by now. Jacques Poisson had explained earlier. Due to the very sophisticated technical system which Formula One has, the drivers are always concerned by technical meetings, technical point of views with the chief of engineer. For example, if you want to do something with the Formula One drivers on the Grand Prix, you have to do it before Friday due to the fact 
on Friday morning, Beckham Shen was practicing. Still, in the pits at the Grand Prix, there is much to see and do. <laughs> I felt like a kid at a circus. Because today, you know, everybody would like to be in the pits. Just for the pleasure to be in the pits. To say I was in the pits. Looking on extravagant girls or, you know, all these small world going on. My Panaflex pal soon found another good reason for being in the pits. Sunday driver Rick Knuckle was there, competing on yet another level of pro racing at the Grand Prix. He was one of 50 or so Sunday drivers who would wheel identical showroom Le Cars in the IMSA-sanctioned Renault Fakem Cup support race. A wild 10-lap sprint over the Grand Prix course. Yeah, hi, how you doing? Come on in. Um, this is our shop. This is where we prepare our Renault uh, Cup car. We rent some space in this shop from uh, our guys who some friends of mine who are involved. Rick Knuckle in is an extremely likable young man yeah. who <laughs> looks more like a college student than a car jockey. He's a rookie driver on a pro circuit, and his philosophy of racing is quite different from Eddie Cheever or Cat Kaiser. I started um, two summers ago uh, with the Skip Barber program at Formula Fords, went to the school at mid and um, <laughs> As we're always kicking stuff over now. Um, went to that program uh, for a four-day school and then a practice day. And um, did that. Uh, decided that the following summer I wanted to get in and do some of their race program. When I attended driver school, the Skip Barber School, they teach you a methodology where you, you should really work up to your limits. Uh, and each person has their own limits. Um, they're not the same from individual to individual, and you have to work up to them. You just don't go out and, and bonsai the car and try to go fast quick. You, you really have to work your way up. Um, and that I try to follow that. It's a good philosophy, and it, it saves you in a lot of uh, heartache and crunched cars. There's a different philosophy about Sunday driver Rick Knuckles crew as well. For a weekend of racing, it consists of a couple of loyal friends, and his mom and dad. What a contrast between the Knuckle crew and the Formula One Team Renault, with an annual racing budget of millions of dollars and legions of engineers, technicians, and mechanics. And they made sure the three complete turbocharged cars available for racing each met the exacting specifications of the sanctioning body. <laughs> What's the budget for Team Knuckle? Gosh, uh, to run a year, I... I estimated about seven hundred, seven hundred dollars an event, seven to seven fifty. I was right about Knuckle. He was good print. Like Elaine Prost, Eddie Cheever, and Cat Kaiser, he had style that set him apart from the ordinary. And now, loyal readers, the final episode in this tome on Sunday drivers. Against all odds, Jacques Poisson was able to deliver Eddie Cheever for a brief session before the camera, even though race time was near and the young driver was tired. Yet through it all, Cheever showed great dignity as he politely answered questions that seemed must have been asked of him hundreds of times before. The most important part of racing is Formula One. Formula One is the top of the, the, top of the pyramid. My, my goal is that to win the championship. I think once I've won the championship, then I will achieve what I wanted to. What I would do afterwards, if I'm ever in the position of winning it and having won it, I don't know. Clearly weary from three solid days of harassment by cameras and microphones, groupies and backslappers, name droppers and autograph seekers, he held it together for one last proud moment to allow a candid peek at the real Eddie Cheever. I spend uh, a lot of time with my family at home, cutting the grass, uh, pruning the trees, I don't do very much. I try to just lead as low profile life as I can, seeing just a very small amount of uh, friends. I don't do very much. I'm not a very, uh, I'm not a party goer. When you close the door, nobody can get in. So, uh, I, no, no, it's not a question of being a celebrity. I have, sometimes I, I, uh, I just hide someplace. We chose a good place. I just try to hide away from everything when I can. So, loyal readers, that's how I spent part of my summer vacation. <laughs> Quite an experience. Elaine Prost, Eddie Cheever, 
Cat Kaiser, and Rick Knuckle will always be winning Sunday drivers in my column, regardless of their race results. <laughs>